nation to down through all history the lily pure and white the rose of sharon fair the shepherd of such tender care sing it to him oh let's talk, talk about jesus Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. That song's really powerful. It's got a lot about our Lord there. Good to be back in the house of the Lord. Good to have each and every one of you here. A lot of them's having to go and get their COVID test. So let's pray that that thing comes out negative. It's the only time I ever want to be negative when a COVID test. And then we're going to... Uh, then we're going to see them take off on Wednesday and <clears throat> and do the work of the Lord. And we sure appreciate it. We, as we prayed this morning, we pray they give them strength, supernatural strength, because they're going to be tired in their human body, but give them supernatural strength to do what they're supposed to do. So just remember them. Also remember what I announced this morning about the media room. Let's don't be in there unless you're a part of that uh, group uh, if you need to talk about something you need to go outside or go downstairs or slip around into rachel's <coughs> sister rachel's sunday school class um uh not when she's there I have to announce these things uh, you never know just remember the wedding will be on the 24th of march we know that uh, esther she's not feeling good today so let's pray for her too and uh, brother micah uh, that he'll get a revelation and um <clears throat> thank you all for going to the nursing home um, Brother Aaron will be speaking Wednesday night. Uh, pray for me. I'll be leaving here in just a little bit, going to Ohio for a couple of days, getting ready for a wedding next month, and and a f few other things we need to we need to talk about. So we appreciate the group up there. They're really faithful. They're really um, they love the Word of God, and um, and they're just precious people. We love them, and we'll we'll be with them there for a couple of days. Also remember Brother Darrell Ward to be here on the 28th and 29th. And also remember that next Saturday at 7 o'clock we'll have Bible study. Not Bible study. We'll have a prayer meeting. Uh, we're not having Bible study this month. We'll have it next month. This month we're having the youth service, which will be the 28th and 29th. So just keep those things in your prayers. <clears throat> Pray for all of us. Um, this old cold, you know, getting on all of us. And we want to... Uh, we want to be healthy. I, do y'all like to be sick? No, I don't either. I'm going to answer it for you. I don't like feeling bad. I don't like feeling. I don't like feeling like I need to go back to bed and and you know the uh, weight of the world's on your head and everything else. So we we just thank God that we have a a healer that God can do that for, <clears throat> and He wants to more than we want Him to do it, right? So let's call on him. Use him. He's not going to get tired. There's one thing for sure. You draw virtue out of him now, you'll never make him tired. Now, he was tired when he was in human flesh. But when he got out of human flesh or glorified body human flesh, he's not tired. Never will be tired anymore. Doesn't matter how many times you ask him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Picked up a, <clears throat> picked up a feather. So let's go to this. Uh, this will be part 81, and we're going to try to get into knowledge. Um, and remember, as we speak on knowledge, remember there's two forms of knowledge. There's a knowledge that the world has. There's a knowledge that God has. All right. So we've got to decipher which one. If you, you, if you use the knowledge of God, you will never fail. You use the knowledge of man. Uh, you might make it in life and, you know, be, you know, make some good money because you know about the first one thing or another or, or your life's a little bit better. But I have never, I've known a few millionaires, a couple of them, and they're not happy either. They're not happy either. They got just as many problems you do. They just don't have bill problems, you know, they just, but they have other problems. You know why? Because remember the rich young ruler, what did he do? He went and built him some more barns. 
And you know what God did? He just took his life. He took his life. He said, no, you're not. No, no, you, you're done. All right, so he turned God down, and we know where he was at when Lazarus and he and Lazarus met, didn't meet, but they talked to each other in that other dimension. <clears throat> so let's remember all these things in prayer um, that we'll come back Wednesday night, and Brother Aaron will be speaking for us. So let's, <coughs> let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we can come one more time, Lord, and we can speak about you, Father. Now I pray, Lord, that you would be with each one, Lord, in the sound of my voice, that you would bless them, Father, and keep this old COVID and flus. We know there's different strains and different uh, names that man has put on it, but it's just the devil. And he's trying to strike young people and uh, older people too. Father, we pray that you'd just push that away from us, Lord, that we'll all have a good time in you, Father. You'll bless us now in the furtherment of this service. Be with the ones that are sick, Lord that are not with us today, we pray that you'd be with them. Be with the ones that are online watching in, Lord. Just take care of them. Lord, give them supernatural revelation, Father. And give us, sitting here in the building, Lord, supernatural revelation. Without it, we can't survive. Brother Brown said the bride loves revelation. Now, Father, I pray that you do that today. Reveal yourself to us, Lord, through your word. Lord, just forgive us of our sins and many mistakes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We're going to kind of kick it up another gear today because we've got, we don't have any visitors with us, so we can kick it up just a little bit today. I love visitors. I mean, that, that helped me to, this morning just as much to just kind of back up and, uh, and speak for a minute on, on a couple of items that was generic enough to where they could understand what I was talking about, so I pray that they'll come back. Amen. Listen, if you don't want people saved, you need to get saved yourself. Amen? Me and no more. No, I don't want no. No, I want everybody saved. Everybody. You say the devil? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to have the devil saved. That way he wouldn't bother me as much. He wouldn't bother me anymore. But he's our adversary, and he can't get saved. And we, we, um, we know that, uh, that he's, if Jesus is the ever-present help in time of trouble, we know who's our trouble. The devil's our trouble. So in the beginning was the Word. Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word was transformed to flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. One morning you'll be seated, Genesis 2, 9. Now right from the get-go, God's going to split this thing up. He's going to split it up into two trees. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. Tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you can go ahead and be seated in the Lord as blessing to the reading of the word. Isaiah 28, 9 says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? You know, we, we, as we were talking this morning about the little child, we all, every one of us started out first grade, kindergarten, first grade, one plus one's two. And man, we didn't get the A plus B equals C for a while. We didn't get to trigonometry. We didn't get to the Pythagorean theorem. I don't know. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. I know Aaron does. You know, Aaron knows everything. And that, well, the other day I said something about something. He said, yeah, I know what that is. So we studied it. But you know what? wouldn't have known that if it hadn't been for somebody to teach me. Right, right. Amen? If somebody hadn't teached me, I wouldn't. it's just not going to pop up in your head. And that's the same way with... With being in the message of the hour, and that's the same way with being with the speaking of the Word of God. God's not going to make you read it. He's not going to make you study. You're going to want to, and therefore He'll already have it there for you. Same way with a teacher. If a teacher gets up and and the teacher that's teaching your class, you walk in. What would it be if you walk in the door in in the well, say college? My uh, baseball coach taught uh, uh, calculus in college, and and if I would have looked at, at at the coach and I and and he was only about seven years old when I walked in the door, he's teaching the class, and he's seven. That would be strange, wouldn't it? But the coach had been a coach for a long time, and he'd been a teacher for like thirty years because he retired the year I was that I was there in, in, in Piedmont, and. Uh, He'd been talking, so I had confidence. Then what? I had confidence he could teach me. I had confidence he had heard enough of the word. He had heard enough of the trigonometry, calculus, and all the different things that he knew what he was talking about. 
It was just, it would just take, <laughs> and get this, and you can giggle if you want to. It took something supernatural to get it to us. <laughs> Everybody say amen. amen. Yeah. It took, so it's going to take something supernatural to get the word of God to us. We're supernatural people. We love revelation, Brother Brown said. We thrive off of revelation. All right, so what we're, why are we thriving off revelation? Because we want to know more about God. We want to know that he's hidden and revealed. We know it's in simplicity, but look, it's hidden and revealed in simplicity. So it is hidden, and it is revealed in simplicity, all right? And truly... I had some teachers. We had one we were talking about the other day, Doc Sis, and uh, he was my math teacher. And he made it, he was so intelligent. But he could, he could get you to understand, and to me that's a wonderful teacher. That's not so far up here. Like, you know, that'd be like Einstein coming in here and trying to teach us the, the uh, theory of relativity. You'd be going, I don't have a clue what's going on. But somewhere down the line, somebody learned that theory of relativity and they were able to break it down to a group of people or break it down to a college group of people and they learned about that same way with the Pythagorean theorem and all these other things you know you can say that but some of you don't know what it is why you haven't been in school not that I'm, I'm not dishing anybody I'm just saying you have not learned that because you have not studied that we don't know about the Word of God unless we study the Word of God. We don't know about what God's got for us until we get there. There's only one, listen, there's not any other curriculum. Man, we had, listen, when I was going to college, they still drew on blackboards. And the kids are going, what's a blackboard? Man, I used to be king of the eraser um, cleaner. So that let mean I could go outside and I'd be the teacher's pet, you know, and I could do what I wanted to. But I, do y'all know what that is? No, then most of you are going. You mean it's not on a, no. But God give us one. It took me six or eight or ten different books that I had to buy every year, every quarter. That I had that, it was required that I have them to learn my study. But God only gives us one. It's not very large. War and Peace is better, b bigger than this is. It's only got 66 chapters, 66 books, sorry, 66 books. So that's what we got. And then the world then is what? Uh, is, is, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's a mysterious book. Let's just put it that way. It's a mysterious book to 99% of the people in this world because about 80% don't even think it's real. And even like um, June's... Um, Dad's girlfriend, she says, well, I don't think it's just the absolute. It's just something people, you know, it's, she would be to me, it would be like this. She wrote this and then somebody else wrote this and somebody else wrote this. And we just kind of put them all together and mix it up in a bowl and whatever pops out. That's what it is. That is God don't work like, his way like that. God says, you're going to listen to this. This is how you're going to get it. You're going to get it through the foolishness of preaching, and you're going to have to have knowledge, and somebody's got to teach you. Whom shall he teach knowledge? You were not born with knowledge. Your brain is wired, yes, to a certain way, and there are others. There are some that are smarter than others, but I believe everybody starts on the same basis. It's just what you want to do with it. Amen. It's what you want to do. It's what you want to understand. Same thing with the Word of God. You can sit here and listen to Brother Dale for 50 years and not and be in first grade. Right. I don't see how. But he, you can't do that. And like I said before, then we didn't come to church and listen to a seventh grade teacher. Please listen. Please don't go to sleep. I've only been here five minutes. But we didn't expect Brother Dale to be seven years old and not know anything and be a novice. No, he knew what he was talking about. And then we evolved or revolved from that, and we did drink milk. Milk's good. Milk's okay. But milk's not everything. But he says, who, look, who shall make to understand doctrine? Every church has to have a doctrine. Every church. Brother Bram said a church without a doctrine is not a church. So we have a doctrine. What is it? All the truth. Amen? We believe in serpent seed. We believe in predestination the right way. We believe in Daniel 70 weeks the right way. We believe in the opening of the seals the right way. So I believe we're in the right institution. 
That's probably not a good word to use. There are institutions for people like me, but I think we have a real good understanding of doctrine. That's what I'm saying is, so what? So we should be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, we should be, what do they call it? They call it weaning them off, where you have a little bit, you know, you have a little bit of milk, a little bit of milk, but what do you do? You feed them other things. And that's what's been going on, I believe, for the last 50-something years. We've been fed other things than just milk. We have been fed doctrine. We've been fed the meat of the Bible. <clears throat> We've not had any scarecrows popped up. I like what a minister said the other day. He said, scarecrows scare crows. It don't scare eagles. I've never heard of a scare eagle. There's scare crows to scare the crows. Well, we're not crows. We're eagles. Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 says, look, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many. So Jesus Christ, look, he was the master scholar. Everybody, uh, everybody agree that Jesus Christ was the master scholar. Amen. Amen. It only took him three and a half years to teach this doctrine that's totally worldwide. Three and a half years, that's all he had. He didn't speak anymore. He didn't speak any before. He didn't speak any after. But by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. In other words, he's going to bear, let me put it this way, he's going to bear my stupidity. His knowledge is not, listen, God's knowledge is not going to, I think what Satan thinks, he says, if I can get enough people to agree that there's not a God, they won't be one. He's crazy. He's crazy. Because that man that created him is never going to go out of existence. And that's the God I serve. That's the husband I have. That's the Savior that I have that Satan could have had in the beginning, but he couldn't. Because what? Iniquity was found in him. And you know what? He sent it away so God can't cover his iniquity. Because you can send away your day of grace and God's iniquity. There's no, I mean, your iniquity will override God all the time. From here till the day of judgment. All right? So now we talked about this morning real quick. Sanctification, cleanness set aside for service. Unclean spirit goes out. We were talking about only chart. If you pull that chart up just for a second, I want everybody to understand when we start talking about now the unclean spirits going out of a man, it's not in your soul. If you're born again in your soul, you have zero unclean spirits in your soul. Zero. God and the devil can't be in there at the same time. That's why you were born in sin, shaping in iniquity in your soul because that soul is the real you. That's the real person. That's why I believe you're talking about the, the little baby going to heaven. All babies go to heaven. Well, what is their memory? They have no memory of anything bad. They don't have to reason. They'll start having a conscious, and when they start having a conscious, that's when the age of accountability where they're going to have to know right from wrong, and they're going to have to make a, what, a decision. They'll make a decision one way or the other, and so have you. We made a decision one way or the other. So the soul is where faith or doubt, not faith and doubt. So we got to see that the Holy of Holies is closed if you're born again. And now we're talking about the spirit realm, the memory, reason, conscience, affection, imagination. That's where we're talking about the unclean spirits are able to work in mine and your life. That's our problem. Problem's not in your soul if you're born again. If you're truly born again, please don't try to go backwards. Don't try to go back and clean the soul up that God's already cleaned up. Now, if it's not, yes, you better get it cleaned up. Because, listen, that's what's going to stand in judgment. And God's going to judge your soul. He's not going to judge your flesh. Soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. The soul, not the body, the soul that sinned. That's where you sin from. You sin from your soul. You do not sin from your flesh. Now, when you get to that next realm now, when Brother Brown talks about a Christian sins every day, well, now, when a Christian sins every day, it's not from here. Obviously, if you're a Christian, it's faith. Where are you sinning from? You're letting your affection take over. 
humanly. You're letting your human reasoning take over. You're letting your human memory, your human conscience, your human imagination, you're letting them into that inner court and you're letting them take over this guy. Everybody with me on that? The spirit man. And, and we live in that spirit. Now, you know, Brother Brown says the soul is the nature of the spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever's in your soul, your spirit is going to react to what's in your soul. Because it didn't bother me, like I said before. It didn't bother me to... It didn't bother me to lust when I didn't have anything in there but doubt. It bothers you when you start talking about stuff like that. No, I was a human being. I reasoned against the word of God. I said, I'm not going to church till mama calls. And then I reasoned that I better come on, but I didn't want to be here. Because I sat there, and in my conscience, I was thinking about everything else. She took me out of the ball game I was going to watch. Oh, y'all didn't do that. Okay. I, I'm preaching to saints today. <clears throat> saints and haints. In my imagination, oh, my, could you look at when you were, when you were not born again, the imagination you had in your, what you had in your head. Everybody shake your head. Yeah, that imagination that, you know what, never would come to pass, but it occupied your time. I'm going to win that lottery if I go just one more ticket. That is your imagination taking over. And then your reasoning is, well, if I don't play, I'll never win. <laughs> yeah, right? So the devil just keeps throwing it. Well, you, so anyway, it tickles me then guys that work at, uh, at the city. They want to, they don't want nothing to do with gambling. They don't want nothing to do with the, you know, there was a, uh, the other day or no, about two years ago, they said it was going to be a casino built down at the Craven Park property, that big white fence in front of my house. Oh, they were so up in arms. And of course I wasn't the mayor at the time. But the mayor, I asked him, I said, what do you do out there in front of the convenience store? What you, what's on front of your truck? He said, what are you talking about? I said, you out there scratching the paint off your truck? He said, no. I said, what are you doing? I said, oh, you're scratching lottery tickets. You're gambling. Why worry about a gambling house? You just made your own. So where are we talking about now? We have moved into that spirit realm, and we have for a while, but right here, when we were down here at faith, we were talking about what? Faith or doubt, the soul of man. Okay, so we went through justification, sanctification, which took the unclean spirit out of here and put God's spirit in here, closed this off, because once you're born again, it's closed off. The womb has been sealed. It can Nothing else can go in. Nothing else can come out. All right? So look right here. Now, this is going to be where the sanctification starts or the real. Now, down here, we say, well, that's sanctification. That's clean and set aside for service. All right? And then the Holy Ghost puts you in service. Now, what does it put you in service for is in your soul is all these other things. Your imagination is now done away with and God's words been transforming you. You're conscious. You're not sitting here thinking about how to fix the tractor and how much, what the score of the ball game is. And, and your memory is what? You're thinking about, that was great sermon that Brother Wayne preached. And I thought about this and I got this part from that. That's your memory part. That Your reasoning is what? The Bible says, come let us reason together. In other words, if there's a false doctrine comes among you, you're going to have to reason it out. Okay, you got to reason that thing out. You know, you can't just say, well, I accept this because that's what Brother Dale said. Now, that don't do you no good. I'm not going to get a revelation solely on what Brother Dale said. Solely on what Brother Bob said. I said solely, you understand, not by one person. I've got to reason it out. What? i got to run it through my filter. That's why we as a church, we run things. I was talking to Brother Tim Cross the other day, and he's coming to preach for us in February when I go to Ohio and do that wedding. And he was talking about something. I said, oh, don't worry. I said, if you preach something wrong, I said, my sisters will jump on you, so don't worry about that. <laughs> Sometimes preachers don't like that either. A woman uh, reasoning with him. 
But affection, now what did the Bible say? It's gonna, our affection is turned to what? Things on high. Our affection is not down here. I love is a horrible phrase that we use all the time. I love to hunt. I love to drink. I love to smoke. I love to, I love to, no, that ain't love. I ain't got nothing to do with it. That's an affection that comes from that spirit realm of man. Everybody all right with that? But look, it says right here, it says to obey, leave that up. To obey what God said do. Now, where is the throne room? The throne room is in that middle part right there. That's what I talk about, your spiritual rudder, because that rudder, it doesn't matter. The rudder don't have to be about this big. But it can move a ship that will hold 2,000 people. If that little rudder turns this way, guess what? That ship's going to turn to the left. Every time. You take that great big old boat that Brother Gary used to have and that old Carolina skiff, and you turn that thing like this, and you know what? It's probably just a little old flap about that big behind his motors, or his motors were turning, turned that whole boat. The motor wasn't turning the boat, folks. The captain wasn't turning the boat. It was the action of the captain that was turning the boat and that little flap or turned the motors to turn that whole boat in the right direction. So that's what you and I, we went through life and we had no rudder in our boat. We just storm over here, blew over here. We just blew over this way. We blew over this way. <clears throat> but it was obeying what God said do is what brought the power. I want us to understand this, this statue of perfect man brings power not just to an individual. I know it's building individuals, but it's bringing power to a church, Amen. to a bride. Amen. It's bringing her to maturity, to where God's not going to have to tell you every time how to dress, every time how, why to come to church, every time why this is right and why this is wrong. It's going to be something inside of you. That throne room is full of truth. Amen. It is truth. So like I said before, let it out. Let that thing seep out from that inner part of you, center part of you, into the spirit realm. And quit denying the word of God. You say, I don't deny the word of God, brother. Wait, I, well, no. If you don't do what the word says, you're denying the word. Okay? What brought the virtue is obedience to the word of God. Let's, let's get through real quick. Now, I, I've read this this morning. Christ never sent me to build an organization. So this is not an organization we're building. Because you know what? That's not an organization. That is a person, you. That is not a person, you and your wife. That is not a person of you and your kids. That's you. That's your person. That's what you've got to deal with is you. So Christ sent me to build individuals to the stature of Jesus Christ that they might be the powerhouse and dwelling place of the Spirit by his word. Listen, God since the day of Pentecost has ruled the soul of man that takes him at his word because the bride in their soul is God. It's not just part of God. It is God. All right? So why have we still got people dying? Why have we still got people that have false doctrine? Why have we still got, well, we still don't have them now, but you got the Lutherans and you got the Wesleyans. They came from Lutheran Wesley, and they're highly denominated now. Why? They took the part of Luther had that was wrong, the part of Wesley that was wrong, and they made it a doctrine. That's what they live by, and it's false. But if they would have started and tried to build individuals, tried to build individuals because a denomination is a group. I don't want us to be denominational message believers. I want us to be individual message believers. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesus that the Ephesian church, there was 12 people, right? They couldn't even pay a preacher. He'd have to work. But Brother Brown said they were the most powerful church of the day because they all 12 had the Holy Ghost. They all 12 were mature because Paul had come, they had come under Paul's tutor, tutoring and teaching, and they had what? They were, they were not questioning everything Paul said. They were not questioning everything God said. They did exactly. They had that little nod from God. They went, they went out, and I believe that from that church, in Ephesus, there were more churches built. There was more things done. There was more gospel going out into the world. And it was the truth. It wasn't part truth. It wasn't Serentius going out there saying, well, this might be right and this might be wrong. No. Irenaeus wouldn't even stay in the same building with the guy. Amen. Right. 
Remember, we all read it. Bob brought it, and we all read it. He said, I don't even want to be in a bathhouse with Serentius. He said, I'm afraid God will what, collapse the building while I'm in there. That's how wrong, but look, that's how wrong one doctrine was. That's how the first church hated that one doctrine that Jesus was a like substance of God, which started and went to 300 A.D., and they said, no, he is a like substance of God. That's what we believe. So if he's a like substance, then there's got to be a father, there's got to be a son, and there's got to be a Holy Ghost. So now, therefore, there's a trinity, tri, tri, unity, tri, trinity, three of them. And guess what? Brother Brown said that doctrine came from the pits of hell. Even though they went to Nicaea, they got together. They brought the religious people of the world. Brother Brown said prophets came and couldn't do any good because they were overwhelmed by the power of the devil. <clears throat> and he said that doctrine came from the pits of hell. It did not come from God. Yet the whole world at this moment, unless you're a believer or part of a oneness movement, so I guess you got a doctrine that comes from the pits of hell. That's why Brother Brown hated denominations. Why am I against organized religion? Now, Brother Brown didn't hate the people, but he hated the doctrine. But now remember, if you take on that doctrine and don't get out of it, virtue, anyone knows the word virtue means see it, must, we must have it because virtue is strength or power. <clears throat> then we talked about the three pulls this morning. I tried to say enough to where... See, because we talk about things like third pull, seven seals. <coughs> People are like, what in the world are you talking about if they're not part of the bride? You know, if they're not part of a good teaching ministry, then there's a lot of things that are absolutely, it, to them it's weird. What do you mean we got to be in third pull? That's why you have to take that and break it down to justification, sanctification. At least they can read that part in the Bible. You can't read about a third pull in the Bible. You can read about it, but you can't see where it says, here's the first poll, here's the second poll, here's the third poll. It took a prophet to bring that, all right? And thank God he came to me. I don't know if he came to you, but thank God he came to me. <clears throat> so the three pulls was what? The outer court in the flesh? Because look, the, the second poll was sanctification, and that's what we're under now in this part, not in the inside. We're already outside. We are, we're at that second realm and going up the statue of perfect man. Our affection, memory, reason, conscience, and imagination has got to be changed. Our soul's, not, our soul's already changed. We're already sitting in heavenly places. We're already raptured. <laughs> we're already in another dimension. In your soul, if you're born again. God came into this dimension to get you. All right. So sanctification is what we're talking about from now on. We're talking about sanctification of all of virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, all the way up to the statue of perfect man. It's where God is cleaning us up to put us in service. You say, well, brother Wade, well, I'm, I got the Holy Ghost. I've got power to, <clears throat> brother Brown said, you've got power to create a world and go live on it. He said, but it's hell by a bar. Amen. What is that bar? That bar's us. Right. That bar's my stinking thinking. Because when people, when you say that, when a preacher says that to you, that you can create a world, listen, you can create a world just like God did. Travel to it like a thought and go live on it. Now, how many of you are going, I believe that 100%. Don't raise your hand. I'll call you something else. Because in your mind and in your humanity, you're like, no way. But it's there. So who's stopping it? Who's the bar? We the bar. And it starts right there in our realm of, I can't imagine that would happen. Right? That's what we say. I can't imagine that's going to happen. My conscience tells me, let's reason on that a little while. And, and I don't know if I want to love to do that or not, but my memory tells me I can't do it because I'm still stuck in this world. And see, then you start reasoning. You say, well, 
Well, now the Bible says he's coming back here to get me. Why would I need to go see what I mean? Why do I need to go build, you know, create a world and go live on it when God's here? See, that's the reasoning that we, why can't we just believe it for what he said? Amen. Bible says if you can, what? Believe in your heart, you can move a mountain. What's the difference? What's the difference in moving a mountain and making one? Same thing, all right? <clears throat> so what is it then? The bar is us. It's our thinking. It's that second realm of our being, all right? So the opening of the word is that seventh seal. That's the son of man. That's going to what? That's going to change your human body. It's going to bring your memory, reason, conscious affection, and imagination under so much of the power of God. Never before, even Jesus, he had to yield to that and die. He yielded to that and died because what? Because of me and you. Not for himself. He didn't die for himself. He died for us. I, I hope don't want to surprise you there. He died for us. He did that for us. Didn't have to do it. But he yielded himself to death, died. Brother Brown said played a part of death because you know what? When we pass away, we're just playing a part of death. Don't tell me Brother Richard Marlowe and, and Brother Ray and, and different ones that's passed on. Don't tell me they're dead. They're alive. Amen. Way more alive than we are. And they're probably one of that group of people that says, he missed the field goal. <laughs> we'll have to deal with that when we get up get up north. I'm sure I'll get all kind of repercussions of that. But that's okay. I don't care. But you see what our but see what our thinking is though? We are programmed to die. We are programmed by humanity to die. You need life insurance. Why do I need life insurance? Because you're going to die. Why do I need to keep going to the doctor? And now I'm not saying the thing. We go for, you need to go for a checkup. Even if you feel good, you need to go for a checkup. Okay. But we go, ah, no, we're not going to worry about that. We feel good. You know, I'm going to trust the Lord and that's okay. Trust the Lord if you want to. But he did give us doctors. He did give us nurses. He did give us medication to take, and we thank God for that. All right, but we don't lean to that understanding. Remember, Brother Brown preached a sermon, lean not unto your own understanding, all right, which is in the Bible. We'll get to that because understanding is part of knowledge. There are several words. I was going to read them. I'll read them now. Wise, unwise, no, knowledge, wisdom, spirit of wisdom. We're going to try to get to that today. Because there's a spirit comes among the bride of spirit of wisdom. To know what's right or wrong, to get to, to take the balance. I, watching Brother George Smith, somebody told me the other day, everywhere Brother George goes and preaches, I can't remember where he was at. He's got a little, um, in his coat, he keeps a, a, a balance, a level. Yes. And he takes the level out and he sets it right here. And he said, we've got to be level. Right. One of them brothers I was talking to the other day, I don't know who it was, but I'll not say, but I, kind of, I think I know who it was now. He said, I want to pick that thing up and throw that thing out the window. Every time, I mean, it don't matter what he was preaching on, he takes that level out and he lays it right here. He said, we got to have a balance, which is right. It's got to be a balance. We do listen to tapes. We do listen to the prophet. We haven't quit listening to the prophet because we got a five-fold ministry. But we're not over here to this side. He said, that's all we're going to listen to. And something that, you know, that we've got one man to follow, and now I think we got two. Brother Branham and Jr. Tell me where that's in the Bible. Amen. Not in the Bible. You should have enough wisdom to know that a five-fold ministry has got to be five folds to get you out of here. There's got to be five different men. How many times have you, you sat and listened to me and you sat, you've listened to Brother Dale, and you've listened to us and listened to us and listened to us. Isn't it refreshing to listen to somebody else? Amen. Don't say that too quick. But it is. It's refreshing to bring one in because it's part of a five-fold ministry. All right? Can't just have one. It's not just one all the time. you got to have a five-fold ministry. And it's not just one man fulfilling five-folds. Now, that's a little bit different. I, to me, it would be, 
it would be um, discomplimentary to the Word of God. Let me just put it that way. For God to just say you can't listen but just one person and that's it. God's a God of variety. Brother Wayne will bring something that I've been preaching and he'll bring it a different way and y'all be going, I ain't never heard that before and I'll preach 15 sermons on it. You know why? You hadn't heard it the way I said it. You heard it the way he said it. Or Bob gets up and he starts preaching and he preaches my sermon over and over again and over again. Glad you're going to Nicaragua. Maybe I'll get some. No, but see, that's the way, but not, no, that's the way the word works. He'll bring it out a way, though, that, that, that somebody will say, man, I didn't see it that way. Uh, many times, Brother Dale, you know, people tell Brother Dale, I said, Brother Dale, I ain't never heard you say that. Well, I pull you 20 sermons where he said it. But it's just, it's part of a fivefold ministry. So what am I saying? That's in that realm right here. I'm talking about born-again people are going to ask questions. Born-again people are not going to get it just from one person. But to perfect us, we've got to have this. Do not worry about this. Carnal man, living room, outer court. Don't worry about that guy. We worry about him too much. Right here's the man we need to worry about if you're born again, folks. To me, this is to me this is God in his fullness. Everybody with me? But when we came down and we come through the womb of a woman like we weren't supposed to, when we come through the womb of a woman, we received a contrary spirit. You with me? A contrary spirit, which is an Adamic nature that's attached to that inside part of you. And you, what will happen is it will take over and you'll become a sinner at the age of accountability. But what happens at the new birth? He burns that nature out. He doesn't burn you out. He doesn't annihilate your soul. He can't annihilate your soul and give you a new one. That's a doctrine that was real prevalent in the message that he'll take one soul out and put another one in. Well, Brother Brown said clearly that there's no transmigration of souls. Listen, when you're born, you have your soul. It stays in you until you die or until you take a body change. It is you because it's a real you. Who's God going to judge if he puts another one in there? No, he's going to judge that one person, that soul that you were born with. That's the one, if we deal with that, though, and we've been dealing with it for probably 50 sermons on you must be born again and how to be born again and all that. Well, now we're working in a little higher order. We're in the spirit realm. The second pull, which would be turning the hearts of the children to the fathers, that would be the revelation of the Son of God or this statue of a perfect man. And then the third pull, we haven't got to. Now, listen, I know for a fact, <clears throat> I know for a fact that you're probably going to question what I'm saying and others are going to question. But everybody says we're in a third pull ministry. Be careful. Right. We got to get that statue of perfect man down first. Right. We right. can't jump all the way up there to the top. Yes, we are covered under the mystery of the Son of Man. But if you don't understand what I'm talking about with the Son of God and have these virtues working in your life, it's no use saying that you're this third pull person. Think about what you're saying. We are third pull people. In other words, it's available for us to get. But we've got to get the second pull or the second part of the ministry of God, the Son of God, which is these virtues working in our life just like Peter, just like Paul, just like James, just like Mark, Luke, all the different ones. If we get that, yes, absolutely. But God's not going to come down on a body that's not finished. He's not. And he's not going to come down on a body that's not the same as the head. Amen. Remember the vulcanization we were trying to right. tell y'all last, last Wednesday night? Sure. It's rubber to rubber is what vulcanizes. Rubber to rock doesn't vulcanize. Right. It don't stick. Right. But if we become him in our second realm, and, and you know, if we, we're going to still have problems, but you know what's going to happen? I believe that those problems are going to get less and less not less and less in intensity, but less and less in bothering us. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Right. 
Brother Branham said, one day death will crawl up your sleeve and you'll just wipe it right off. Now, wow. Now, take that for a quote. Everybody wants powerful quotes. You think about what happened when he said that. He said, one day death will come up your sleeve and you'll be able, in other words, to push it back. And he didn't say be able to go call the preacher that calls the deacon that calls the elder. He said you will be able to push it back. You will be able to do the, no devil, not my time. You believe that? Then we've got to get these second pull, the spirit realm, the, the memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination. We've got to start taking that and letting that be the most important thing. If you're born again in your soul, listen, it's just like a, a little piece of, of um, atomic energy in your soul. What you're doing is you're trying to crack the shell to get it out. So you're cracking the shell to get it out to that second realm of memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination. Like I said before, don't worry about your, your, your flesh. Listen, I'm going to promise you, I'll be 63 in a few days. Ryan, if you hadn't done what you did, Terrence had been finding somebody else to do that openness. Don't start off wrong. Now, he'd say that if it was September, so y'all just don't, just don't bother me about that. But I know I'm getting older. I know it's harder to get out of a car, harder to get out of the bed. But that should never, ever hinder your spirituality. Just because I'm getting older, I don't have to study anymore. Just because I'm getting any older, I don't have to come to church. Now, the Bible didn't say that. I'll hurt your feelings. Your feelings ought to be hurt. So we blame it on old age. Now, you blame a lot of things on old age. All right? I can't stay up all night. You know, I can't do this. I can't do that humanly. But if, if, if Joshua and Caleb... Caleb was 80-something years old. He was 40 when he went in, you know, went into the wilderness. They were in there 40 years. He was like 85 years old. He said, I, he said, my strength has not abated. He said, I'm just as strong now as I was then. What was he testifying? He wanted that mountain. He wanted that mountain. That was his to get. And he never said, well, I'm 85. I think I just want to, I want to just go up about two feet. I'll just, no, he said, give me my mountain. Amen. Now, when are we going to say, give me my promises? Amen. Give me what I'm supposed to have Amen. at 85 years old. And he was just as strong. Why? He had a will. He didn't have the Holy Ghost in his soul, folks. But he had a promise. Those people in the Old Testament died under a promise. Under a promise that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was going to come and die, come through a virgin, die, and take their sins away. And they moved mountains. Brother Bob, you can get into Hebrews 11. They did all those great things. That whole chapter, not one of them had a new birth. Not one. It was just a will of them saying, I believe that's what's going to happen. I believe what this prophet is telling me. Of course, those prophets got killed by a lot of people too. But they were listened to, and they were so like Barak, you know, different ones. But look at them. They all started out with, I can't do that. I can't do that. Right. Gideon was hiding when God said, you're a mighty man of valor. And he's going, really? He said, isn't that your land? Aren't you, aren't you tired of them people doing that to you? Pick up something and just start fighting. You don't have to be trained in jujitsu and all that stuff. Pick up your sword, the word of God. In other words, he had an ox goat. He picked up what he could get. And you know what he done? He got what he wanted. Same way with Caleb. Caleb didn't count how many, because supposedly that was the son of Anak, was the one that was on top of that mountain, which was the giants. God always makes it a little bit harder. 
Well, now let's not cross Jordan when it's only about this, about this wide. Let's wait till the snow melts out of from Judea. Let's wait till it's about two miles wide. Let's wait till flood season. God said, "We're waiting till flood season." I'm going to send them across during the, the swelling of Jordan. So in your worst trials, guess what? It's got to be a blessing if you're a Christian today. It's got to be a blessing. Your trials will absolutely. You know who it's for? It's not for you. It's to prove to the devil that you can do it. In the worst of situations, the most swelling of your life, he said, step in that water. Take the priest down there and step in that water. As soon as you step in that water, I'm not going to just make it where you can walk across. I'm going to move it back. And you'll have a two-mile path you can walk right through Jordan. And as Brother Wayne was saying, there is, there is a, a two piles of stones. One of them is in the Jordan. And when it swells, you can't see it. But when it settles back down, they go, man, they couldn't even see that. When they crossed the first time, but God had to open it up and they could put the stones in there and come back together. What a mighty God we serve. Where's Sister um, <clears throat> Johnny when we need her? She called the other day. Boy, you talking about somebody talking fast. If her team had missed a field goal and, and yeah, anyway. When, when Sister Johnny calls, she talks. You listen. And it's real good. We miss her, don't we? She's faithful. She said, I'm watching. I'm saying, sick him, devil. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. Amen. But Brother Bram said it would be these divinely revealed mystery truths that literally turn the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal fathers. That's going to be when the seals open. When he started in 63, he said, my new ministry are the son of man. Now, what is the son of man? The son of man's not dealing with your soul. You quiet? Your soul by this time ought to already be redeemed. Because you'll never understand the Son of Man, what the Son of Man is, unless you got God, that Son of Man, in your soul. So the third pull was what? To a special group of people. It's not for you on questions and answers. It's gone from you. It's not for you to get. In other words... You worry about cleaning this guy up right here. He's what he say? Live a good Christian life. And the way he said, live a good Christian life. Do the best you can. In other words, though, God's going to send a power in the church after these seals are open to show you that not only this guy can be redeemed, but you know what? This guy can be redeemed. When we take a body change, this guy is going to be changed, and it will be fully redeemed. Everybody with me? So that hasn't come yet. That's the chief headstone. We're under that ministry, but we got to get the Son of God ministry down first. Before, that's why I've tried to back up. I was going to continue on through into the Son of Man, but we've got to get the Son of God ministry down first. The memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination working in Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, and brotherly kindness. Remember, faith's not an ad. If you're born again, you get faith. Everybody with me? All right. Now, look, this is what Brother Brown's explaining when we're talking about this message of Malachi 4 do two things. Bring back the church to the word. Now, what is the messenger of Malachi 4 to do? Restore back the original faith, the resurrection faith. They've not had to have resurrection faith. Now listen, you're resurrected sitting in heavenly places, but that's where those two guys had the doctrine that Paul says the resurrection's already over. Paul's talking about an out-resurrection. Where are the resurrection? The resurrection in your soul. Because listen, at this very moment, Paul's body... Oh, I wasn't supposed to touch that, sorry. ...is in the grave. Sorry, Richard. Oh, Lord. But his body's in the grave. It's probably now, it's probably back to dust. You probably can't even find it. But that thing still lives. And this thing right here, he still got it too. Because remember, they can remember what went on when Brother Brown went across the curtain of time. They remember. 
They said, you've got to go back. You don't lose those things. Brother Brown said, you got an eye. He said, God's got an eye, but it's a greater eye. Well, when you go across the curtain of time, you got an eye, but it's a greater eye. Amen. Amen. Because the limit, what we're limited to this. They're not limited. When they go across, it doesn't matter. They can leave their body here. They leave the limit here. And when they break over in that other dimension, man, their senses are just exploded. All right? <clears throat> they were men of few words. They went forth and preached the word. Talk about preaching all night. Now, what? he'll take the message of Pentecost, which was not Azusa Street. See, he couldn't depend on Azusa Street Pentecost because they were Trinitarians. The original Pentecost was not Trinitarian. The Pentecost of 1906 was a denomination. The Pentecost of the first era or the first church age was not a denomination. So Brother Brown wasn't talking about, because when he would, I, I just, it tickles me that he's sitting there preaching to a bunch of Pentecostals, and every time he talks about the message of Pentecost, I bet they're like, oh, yeah. And he says, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about the original Pentecost. That's why they hated him. That's why the Pentecostals still hate him today. You can say Brother Brown's name in the Baptist church and it's not going to hurt you. Do not go to a Pentecostal church and say the word William Branham or the name William Branham. They do not like him because he preached so much against them. Because they were what he came out of. They didn't come with him. They stayed right here and he's telling them, he said, you're dead. And it wasn't hearsay. He was telling them sitting in their bench, you're dead. Because he'll be rebuking them because they didn't keep this same faith that was back there at the beginning. Amen. Now, I believe we pretty well realize it's going to be Elijah. We know that for sure. And notice the first Elijah was come to turn the hearts of the children. He flipped that around. The hearts of the fathers to the children. That would be John the Baptist. Baptist. See, the old patriarch fathers, the old orthodox, the legalist, the law, he turned it back to the faith of the fathers, from the faith of the fathers to the children. In other words, the new message that Jesus was bringing. What's the new message? You must be born again, not you must go to the temple. Right. You must be born again, not depend on a lamb. Right. Lamb, lamb. All right? That's what he was teaching. That's what he was telling them. That's why John was turning them. That's why John didn't really have a doctrine to teach. He said, behold, I'm introducing this one that's going to teach you. All right? <clears throat> he said, I, I can't even, he said, I wouldn't, not even worthy for him to loose my shoes. All right, look. So now the hearts of the children, this new message that John was preaching of the coming Messiah at hand, he turned the hearts to this. But now watch, the next time John appears, we know that he meant the next time, the John, spirit of Elijah in John. All right, Brother Brown wasn't John. All right, but the spirit of Elijah in John, the next time John appears, he turns the hearts of the children back to the faith of the Pentecostal fathers. That would not be 1906. That's way before. That would be 80, 30, 33. So it would be back to the original message. And you'll know when it gets here. Now look, it has been eroded down through the ages where Brother Brown said they don't even believe in signs. They don't believe in that. Back in his age. They don't believe in wonders. They don't believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in this, that, and the other. He said, that's why I go with you Pentecostal people because you're as close to the truth as they were back then. He said, as close. He said, they weren't the truth because <clears throat> they would what? He said, you cut your hair every year more. He said, I preach on it. And you cut it off every year I come. He said, you put on tighter clothes. You do all these things. In other words, you don't listen to what I'm saying. You'll know when it gets here. It'll be a restoration to send that lukewarm Laodicean church Back to that original faith back yonder. Yes, sir. And he will be anointed. Who? This, this Elijah that we're under. When this Elijah comes, he'll be a prophet. He'll pull no punches. He'll cut right and left. And then we talk about restore. Joel says, I will restore the years that the locusts eat. What did the locusts eat? What did the canker worm palm worm? What they eat? They eat the original faith. They eat the original tree that was back in what? Pentecost. A.D. 30 Pentecost, 33 Pentecost. Right. That's right. It was eat down and what it was. And now listen, God can only work in truth. Amen. He can wink at ignorance, but he can only work in truth. That's why Brother Brown would say, he'd say, if I've told you the truth, let God come and vindicate it. Right. Now listen, God's not obligated to vindicate anything but the truth. 
And for him coming on the scene and vindicating it, it must have been the truth. But you know what? That's why they hated him too. That's why they hated Brother Branham. They were saying he was false and he was false teaching, but oh, when he got on the pulpit and he got the anointing, it was good. It was a true anointing. I don't understand that. So I will restore. You can go ahead and pull the quotes back up. I'm finished with that right now. Proverbs 12, talking about a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. We talked about that. We got to get to knowledge here just for a minute and then we'll, then we'll close. Let's go to knowledge. Now, we know what virtue is. We know the virtue is strength. That's something we have to have. But you got to know what? How to use that strength. Right. Everybody with me? I know it's hot in here. I know y'all taking a night, night, nap. I just hope my pilot tonight does not take a night, night, nap. Even the co-pilot. See, I don't ask God. When I get in an airplane, I don't ask him to be co-pilot. I don't ask God to be a co-pilot in my car. No, I want him to run the thing. I want him to drive the airplane. I want him to drive my car. It's like that old guy worked for us. And what was his name? T. Rick. What? Rick. I remember Rick. Oh, man. Anyway, so he was, he was a Christian man. He was a nominal Christian guy. And he goes around this curb with some chicken on it that we had that we were going to deliver somewhere. And he hits this barn. And the barn's really close to the road. He hits this barn, and I mean, it just drives two by fours right through the cab and right through into the into the um, back of the truck. That, that uh, I think it was his truck. But anyway, there was a guy standing there, and Rick was testifying. And said, "Well, if the Lord hadn't have been with me, I would have got killed. And if the Lord hadn't have been with me, he said that old man looked at him and said, "Buddy, you keep driving like that, and the Lord ain't gonna be with you. <laughs> That's why I want him to drive." I don't want him to be the co-pilot. <laughs> He'd have got two by four stuck through him. Knowledge. What was his name? Rick White. Rick White. Rick White. Oh, slick Rick. He was a good one. Yeah, the old man said, you keep driving like that, buddy. He said, Lord ain't going to be riding with you much longer. And that's the same way with us. That's why I want him to drive my vehicle. I don't want him to be my co-pilot. I want him to drive my vehicle. Amen, right. <clears throat> 2 Peter 1, verse 5, we talk about knowledge. So this is, knowledge starts with four letters, K and O, W. So it's got to do something with knowing or know or know what's going on, all right? So knowledge, 2 Peter 1, verse 5, says, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now look at this word knowledge in the Greek. It's called gnosis. It's knowledge signifies in general intelligence. We were just talking about that. Understanding the general knowledge of Christian religion. The deeper, more perfect, and enlarged knowledge of this religion. So it's not just grammar school knowledge. Everybody with me? It's not just grammar school knowledge. All right? Such as, look. The deeper, more perfect, and enlarged knowledge of this religion, such as belonging or belongs to the more advanced. Now, that's what we're talking about. You get a certain form. Listen, when you get born again, you get knowledge, a part of knowledge, telling you to do what the Word of God said. But then you've got to, you've got to take that higher to where as you listen to the Word of God, you have to decipher what's good and what's bad. You have to take that knowledge and apply it to you. Such as belongs to the more advanced, especially of things lawful and unlawful for Christians. Because you remember, look, the knowledge when Serentius came in and he said, I believe that's a light substance of God because that just can't be God. He cried, he hungered, he, and I'm sure he brought all kind of accusations or, or evidences to, to prop up what he had. But remember... It was false. So whatever he used to prop up, he used it wrong. He didn't have the knowledge of God to tell him like Irenaeus. That's why Brother Branham picked Irenaeus and didn't pick Polycarp. Remember? He said Polycarp was a mighty man. He was a wonderful guy. But he leaned toward organized religion. Is that not what he said? But he said Irenaeus stood there and said, no, nope, that's wrong. Polycarp, get away from that, and Polycarp wouldn't get away from it. 
But now I'm telling you, Polycarp's going to make it. He was that far. He was that close to being a church age messenger. Can we be that close to a body change? Hmm. Oh, when we bring it to now, it wasn't bad to say that about him, but when we bring it home, that we could be this much by leaning into organization or, or doing what you want to do. Watch this. Moral wisdom. That's another word. I stopped at spirit of wisdom. Um, the word understanding, the word known, um, the word says, look, we, we talk about the word knew. Adam knew his wife. In other words, he had knowledge of her. Everybody with me? We'll talk about that a little bit later, but we'll close right here in just a second. Moral wisdom such as seen in what? Right living. Hmm. Genesis 2, 9. Now, here we go. We separate them. The tree of what? The tree of in the garden and the tree of knowledge. Now, look. That is a tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's not just evil. There is some good, like I said before, to get out of all this. A lot of people are not going to be able to chime in today or turn into the, to the Internet and watch us online without some what? Knowledge off of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. But God's a, he's, he's a master at that. He lets the devil do things and he'll you Listen, the way to drive you to God is for the devil, for him to turn the devil loose on you. Right. Right. Hello, somebody. We hate that. We don't like it, but that's exactly God's prescription. If you get to wandering away from God, he will send the devil on you to drive you back. Amen. Well, I don't know if that happened. Maybe it's just me. I, maybe it's me, this whole thing. I, hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, drawn from the breast. Now, the word knowledge, out of the dictionary, but I like this. Watch this. The fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity. Is this a strange doctrine to you? Is this a strange message? I know when you first get born again, if say if our brother and sister comes and gets gets born again, it's a little strange. But now it's not strange. You're strange. Your thinking's strange. My thinking is strange. It's not that the message is strange. It's what, look, it's the fact of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or association. Birds of a feather. Acquaintance with or understanding of science, art, or a technique. The fact of con or condition of being aware of something. When you have knowledge of something, what? You're aware of it. You're aware today whether I'm preaching you the truth or not. If you're born again, how many of you have been sitting in a, in a sermon and a brother say something a little bit off or a little bit wrong? What happens? Ding. Something goes off right here. That's knowledge. That's your Holy Ghost knowledge taking what? Taking your memory and bringing it down to say, hey, there's something wrong with that. Brother Ram talks one time, he says it doesn't ring true. Remember, we talk, preached on the uncertain sound. <clears throat> the range of one's information or understanding, which is um, example is answered to the best of my knowledge. <clears throat> Watch this right here. I like this one. The circumstance or condition of apprehending truth. You got to go get it. When you apprehend a suspect, guess what you've done? You've run down the road or you've drove down the road and you've apprehended that person. In other words, you have went in their direction and you have apprehended. So what? We're going to come into this direction. To apprehend the word of God, you've got to know where the word of God's at. The circumstance or condition of apprehending what? Truth or fact through reasoning. You say, oh, <clears throat> Bible says come let us reason together. And we'll read that a little bit later on when we get into reasoning. We'll talk about that. But Brother Brown, let's, let's do this, and then we'll, uh, we'll close right here. And the musicians get ready to come. Brother Brown said in the statue of perfect man, said, then thirdly, you add knowledge. Knowledge, now that don't mean worldly knowledge, because that's foolishness to God. But knowledge to judge, judge what? Right from wrong. How do you judge it then if you've got Christian knowledge with your virtue and faith? You judge whether the word is right or wrong. 
And if you can lay aside all your creeds and all your unbelief, everything that you claim you have done, then you have knowledge to believe that God cannot lie. Let every man's word be a lie, but mine be true. See, now you're getting knowledge. That supreme knowledge. You don't have to have four degrees in some college or something like that to have it because all these virtues are given to you by God, not by school. To place upon the foundation of your faith that you might come to the full stature of a real living man of God. Why do we, why do we come to church? I, I, and I fail miserably. I come here to get better. Surprise. I come here to get better. I don't come here to get worse. I don't go to the, to the doctor's office or I don't go to the hospital to get worse. I take the prescription to get better. I come here. Let's read this right here and then we'll close. Musicians, come on. Is that your perfect man? Brother Brown says, now, when you get it like that, then add that to your faith. When you get true virtue, add it to your faith. When you can walk out here on the street, live like a Christian, act like a Christian, be a Christian, add that to your faith. In other words, strength. When you have knowledge, you say, well, I don't know whether this scripture is just right. Now, here is Acts 2.38. I don't know how to go about it with Acts 28.19. I don't. All right? You don't add nothing because you ain't got it yet. See, what are you going to do? Because you don't. You haven't got knowledge enough to know of God yet that the Bible does not contradict itself. See, look, leave it alone. And I put that word but in big letters. Look, but when you can see that the Scripture is not contradictory, when you can see that the Scriptures are not contradictory, that you can say that, and can see that by the revelation of God, the whole word is wrote in mysteries. Look, and only the knowledge of God can reveal it. Man's knowledge says it can't happen. <clears throat> Man's knowledge says it ain't going to happen. Man's knowledge says it doesn't matter how you go to church. You can wear whatever you want to. You can do whatever you want to. You can live like the world and still be a Christian. Now, that's the overpowering, um, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's very prevalent in denominations. Because you can't tell them guys from the world. <clears throat> we, uh, well, never mind. <clears throat> Rub shoulders with the world every once in a while. <clears throat> Ask them, say, hey, man, <clears throat> what'd you get that tattoo for? Why'd you get that piercing for? Wow, I like it. I enjoy it. I wanted to do it. <clears throat> now, what do we do when somebody says, hey, you want to get a tattoo, Brother John? No, I, no, because I don't enjoy it, don't like it, don't want it, don't think nothing of it. Amen. Now, wait a minute. That's too different. But the prevailing world is, <laughs> Mom saw it last night. We was at that wedding. She said, hey, people got tattoos everywhere. <clears throat> I started to say, Mom, you probably, there's some that you can't see. That, uh, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> but that's, that's the world, and then you can have that, you know. You can have that. The preacher can get up, and he, he can go outside and smoke a cigarette, put some chewed tobacco in his mouth, and talk like a sailor, but he's a preacher. Let's stand to our feet. <laughs> so, but only the knowledge of God can reveal this. <clears throat> then when you get and say, punctuate every word of God with an amen, then add that to your faith. Are we at that point? Let's say, Lord, build me up, O oh Lord, into this. Let Christ be my head that works through me, working through me. On my foundation, my faith that's in him, let virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness work in me, O oh Lord, is my prayer. I don't care, live or die, sink or drown, denomination or no denomination, friend or no friend. How many of y'all can <clears throat> say that or did you get cut off somewhere in there somewhere? I don't care, live or die, sink or swim. Denomination, no denomination. Friend or no friend. Let that work in me. Let Christ's virtue, his knowledge, flow out that I might be able to teach those. For God has sent in the church apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists, all for the perfecting and bringing all these virtues into it. 
for that perfection of the coming of the Son of God. Each one of these stones are a material <coughs> off of that one. This is material of this. He's talking about these virtues. This is material of this. Each one of these virtues belong into him, and they're pouring out of him down through them. Amen. Down through them. Amen. Down through them. That means us. Amen. We'll talk about the spirit of wisdom when we get back. Because Brother Brown said, look, the spirit of wisdom comes into the church to make known the church to the church by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. So the spirit of wisdom got to come into the church. It's not just something. It's not just. We've been message believers for years and 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 years. We got to come to a knowledge that we're better than that. That we're here for another purpose. We're not here for a purpose of just to be in the message and to gather together and to bring our our uh, you know bring our uh, uh, ideas. No, we come here to see what He's got for us, to see what God's got for us, to see what song He wants us to sing, to see what praise He wants us to do, to see what He wants preached. Where you can, uh, many times, Brother Dale said many, many times, and, and you can feel it, that he'll try to get a sermon, try to get a sermon, and man, it'd be like this right here. Aaron? Amen. Hey, man. Be like this right here. And then you come to church that morning, and you got five visitors. Well, that's why God knew those visitors were coming, and he didn't want them to teach on the seals that day. He wanted to get down a little bit lower so that, the, so that they could understand that you don't leave people out. And there's one thing for sure. You don't sit there and bash them the whole service either. We've been to them services before too. Right. Amen? Amen? Yeah. When you see a preacher that said, I just had to hit that long, that short-haired woman sitting in the front row. Well, you know what? She probably drove her away because that was her first service. I mean, come on, people. That's where you don't have the knowledge of God. Right. You don't have any wisdom when you do that. Let me tell you one thing for sure. I'm glad you're not God, and I'm glad I'm not God. That's right. They wouldn't nobody make it right. if we were God. How many of you came to church with a pair of pants on or short hair or whatever more? You didn't get kicked out. Not in this church you didn't. You didn't get preached on either. There was a love and a reverence that we gave. Every human being has a soul. And as Louise says, they're worth 10,000 worlds. Every soul, not just a, oh, bless God, it's just a bride. No, every soul is worth 10,000 worlds. Every soul to God is important. It's up to you to make it important. Well, I, well, get born again. That's what God wants. He just wants us to get born again and start living the statue of perfect man. That's what he wants. He don't want nothing else. Okay? He wants you to show the world, though. He wants you to let the world know, I'm different. I'm different because you know what? Jesus Christ was different. Brother John, they called Jesus everything but God. They called him the devil. You know why they did that? Because that devil inside of them hated him so much. Hated him so much, so they called him Beelzebub. The devil was calling Jesus Beelzebub. Well, the devil inside of Caiaphas and all them other people did. But when he met them real demons in Gadara, what's the first thing they said? Oh, thou son of God, why you come here to judge me before my time? They knew exactly who he was because they knew they could see in that realm, in that spirit realm, they could see that that was God. And they were the devil. They had the devil in there, or they were, you know, part of the devil. So that's the way the world's got it all messed up. When Jesus came here, nobody liked him. Right. Caused war everywhere, but he's the prince of peace. Amen. He opened out his mouth, the Bible says, but he caused a lot of fuss heading to the cross. Right? Sometimes we misunderstand this man called Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace, because that's what we're headed to. There will be peace. Listen, you won't know peace. You don't know peace here. You say, well, I'm having a little bit of peace. Well, it's a little bit. <laughs> right? Right, Brother John? You got kids. I know you do. <clears throat> a little bit. A little bit of peace. But think about a perpetual peace. We can't fathom that, Brother Joe. We can't do that. We can't sit and go, oh, I can know that. No, you don't know that. 
But you know what? I'm depending on God. If I'll do what he says, that he'll put that inside of me. And what's inside of me will take me to peace. It'll take me to the peace that passes all understanding. Wow. Let's sing a song. God bless you. If you have a need. Been, he's been, she has been a recipient of the healing power, Lord. And I pray that wherever these go, Lord, that it'll touch the uh, therapist, Lord, and, and Luke David. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are He said the mountain was holy because God was standing on it. There's not a holy church. There's not a holy building. It's the holy people in the building. That's me and you. Take that to the world. That The world is dying. They need God. And I'll promise you today before this service started, if we could see in another dimension, the angels marched in that door first, and they're all along these walls. Because I'll promise you the devil will want to stop this from happening. But what a protection that we have. You say, I don't see it. I don't feel it. Now, God never told us any of that. He said, believe it. And I believe that. I believe that angels are if we can see them. Standing on hold. They're ministering spirits sent to me and you. <clears throat> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Over here. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, our brother standing here today, Lord, with a need. In his presence on holy ground. Oh, we are standing. One day we won't have to leave this. We'll have to go home. Praise God, there'll never be a Monday. Amen? The little things that we take for granted that we're not going to have to worry about when we get over there. Brother Joe, you're not going to have to worry about losing your glasses or finding them. You're not going to have to worry about your car keys losing them or finding them. You're not going to worry about your hair losing it or finding it. It'll be right there. But what is, 
one more thing before we go. There, this is a minute part of your life if you're a Christian. I'm talking about just a blip on God's radar. He's, he's brought us down here to live in human bodies to what? To show him to the world. And then we're going to an eternity that we can't even fathom. Because when I say a little blip, that don't really mean a whole lot. I mean, Brother John, it's really like that, you know. We're just down here for a moment. What, 70, 80 years that we get to live here? You know, maybe a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter. But get him in your soul. Get God in your soul. If you get God in your soul, you're just as eternal as God is. And then Brother Brown could say, the quote, you never had a beginning and you never had an end. What? The real you. The real you. The one you that was supposed to be here had there not been a fall. And that's your soul because your soul is changed back. Not exchanged, but it's changed back to that young 18-year-old. Well, praise God. All the things God's got for us that we can't even see in the natural realm. But if we'll just, every once in a while, just get in the spiritual realm. Just close your eyes or even open your eyes and say, God, show me just a little bit. Just a little bit more. I want to know a little bit more. Give me some more knowledge. Have you ever just asked him for anything in the statue of perfect man? That's what we're talking about. Just ask him. Say, God, I, I'm, I'm missing it in virtue. Be honest with him. I'm missing it in knowledge. Lord, I'm missing it in temperance. Okay. Well, that's your issue then. Then we're going to work our way through it. This is not Alcoholics Anonymous. This is not going to suppress your feelings. Suppress your feelings, you're just going to explode one day and be the same person you were before, before all this. But if you'll give it to God, he'll eliminate it, and there'll be no way it'll come back. What a mighty God we serve. Amen? Let's bow our heads. We're going to get, um, get out of here real quick, and we'll change clothes. Uh, pray for Sister Jim, and, and we'll keep up with everything with the uh, surgery and all on Wednesday. But just pray for me that all the traffic's good from here to the airport, and we get on the plane and get over there and, and have a good time with them. We sure appreciate all of our streamers. We appreciate the ones that come here, and we appreciate all the ones that that archive our sermons because I believe that that I believe that we're doing something good. I said we. I ain't talking about one. We're all doing something good for the glory of God. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be here. Amen. You either. All right? So let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you have encamped angels around the believers to hold back the power of the devil. Lord, I pray that that would continue in our daily walk of life, Lord. When we stand and we do something wrong and we hang our heads and we, we say, Lord, Father, forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. I shouldn't have done that. But, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. And the Bible says you are just to forgive. So I believe the word of God that today our sins can be forgiven. And our daily walk can be more like you, Lord. Be with us, Lord, on the highways, the ones that are going home, the ones that are sick. Uh, touch a vehicle there, Lord, that I'm going to be driving. There'll be no accidents. There'll be no flat tires. Everything will be good. I'll get there in plenty of time. And the plane flight will be fine, Lord, and go <clears throat> meet with our brothers and sisters there in Ohio. Father, just be with the group here, Brother Aaron, speaking for us on Wednesday, that will come together, Lord, in service for you. Be with our wife and touch her on Wednesday, Lord. Touch the surgeon's hands, Lord, and let them say that was a miracle that we got everything done. Thank you, Lord, for all things you've given us. We appreciate your word. We appreciate the things you've given us in life. And we're looking forward to another year, Lord, that we can climb up this statue of perfect man, somewhere that man cannot go without the new birth. And I pray, the Lord, to just be with us now. Sanctify us in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. His presence on holy ground.